We all know that sine squared x plus cos squared x is always 1. But what about 1 over sine squared x plus 1 over cos squared x? Could that ever be 1? The short answer is no, it can't be, because we know that sine of x is always going to be between minus 1 and 1. So if we square sine of x, we know that's going to be a positive number, but less than 1, or less than or equal to 1. And so therefore, 1 over sine squared x will be bigger than or equal to 1. So this will be bigger than or equal to 1. And then for the same reason, this will be bigger than or equal to 1. So and if I add them up, that would be at least 2. But who says x has to be real? x could potentially be a complex number. So to make that a bit clearer, let's use z here instead of x. Now, this becomes a more interesting question. Can we find a complex number z such that 1 over sine squared z plus 1 over cos squared z is 1? The answer is yes. Let's see why. So let's make this thing here 1. So 1 over sine squared z plus 1 over cos squared z. Let's make that 1. Now we're going to just multiply both sides by sine squared z and cos squared z. So on the left hand side, I'm just left with cos squared z plus sine squared z. And on the right hand side, I just have sine squared z times cos squared z. Amazing. Cool. OK, this left hand side here, we can just use the ordinary trig identity that we have up here. This thing here will just be one. And in fact, what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by four here. So I'm actually going to make this four here. And then this is going to be four lots of sine squared z cos squared z. And then what I can do with that is factor out or kind of realize that that's a perfect square. It's two sine z cos squared, uh, two sine z cos z all squared. And now, so I've got four equals that. So that tells me that if I square root both sides, two sine z cos z is plus or minus two. OK. What is 2 sine z cos z? We're using our double angle formula. 2 sine z cos z is just sine of 2z. So we have sine of 2z is a plus or minus 2. And now normally, if z here was a real number, this would have no solutions. But since z is complex, this actually does have solutions. Let's see why. We're going to use our friend Euler to help us. So e to the i theta is cos theta plus i sine theta. This is due to Euler. This is Euler's formula. What I'm going to do is, in this, replace a theta with minus a theta. So this becomes e to the minus i theta. And cos of theta would be cos of minus theta. And then plus i sine of minus theta. But if you just look at a cos graph, it's symmetric about the y-axis. We call that an even function. So cos of minus theta is actually just the same as cos of theta. And in a sort of similar way, sine is what we call an odd function. If I do sine of a negative number, that's the same or the negative of what I would have got if I'd plugged in a positive number. So i sine of minus theta is just minus i sine of theta. OK, cool. What we're going to do is do this uh, line here, subtract this line here. So on the left side, I've got e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta. And on the right hand side, while well, the cos theta is there, they're going to cancel out. And then I've got i sine theta minus minus i sine theta. So that's 2i sine theta. So dividing by both sides by 2i, I get sine theta is e to the i theta minus e to the minus i theta all over 2i. OK, cool. Let's take this back up over here. To sine of 2z is plus or minus 2. So if we replace theta down here with 2z, this is going to become e to the i or 2iz minus e to the minus 2iz equals, and if I kind of multiply both sides by 2i, I'm going to get plus or minus 4i. So we're looking at this equation here. How do we solve this? Pause! I've decided to set up my own tutoring company to help you study maths at a top university. So if you like the way I explain things, go check it out. Let's get on with the video. So we're going to do a little substitution here. We're going to say u is going to be e to the 2iz. If I substitute that into this, this is just u. e to the minus 2iz, that's just going to be 1 over u. And this is plus or minus 4i. Let's multiply through by u everywhere. So I get u squared minus 1 is plus or minus 4ui. And bring that 4ui onto the left side. So I get u squared minus plus 4i minus 1 equals 0. Now, oh, sorry, there's supposed to be a u here. Now, this is just a quadratic, and we know how to deal with quadratics. We can deal with this 
in a bunch of ways. We could use the formula. We could use completing the square. Uh, we could try and factorize this, but that won't be very nice. I'm going to use completing the square here. So this is going to be u minus plus 2i squared. Uh, then it's going to be minus uh, 2i squared. So that's going to be minus or plus 4 um, minus 1 equals 0. So I've got u minus plus 2i. Uh, plus 3 is 0, uh, so it's squared there. So if I bring this up here, so u minus plus 2i is my, uh, the square root of minus 3, oops, easy, which is going to be uh, root 3i, or plus or minus root 3i. And so therefore u is one of four things, so it's either uh, 2i plus root 3i, it's 2i minus root 3i, it's a minus 2i plus root 3i, or it's a minus 2 minus root 3i. And I could probably bring them all, you know, factor the i's out of these. So i, 2 plus root 3. In fact, I might just write this as i times plus or minus 2 plus or minus root 3. And we just remember that there's four possibilities there. So u is one of these four numbers here. And well, what is u? u is just e to the 2iz. So I can say that this thing here is e to the 2iz. So now if I just take the logarithms on both sides, I get 2iz is the logarithm of i times plus minus 2 plus minus root 3. And if I now just divide by a 2i on both sides, I get z must be ln of i uh, plus minus 2 plus minus root 3, all divided by 2i. And that there gives us four complex numbers which satisfy 1 over sine squared z plus 1 over cos squared z is 1. Now, of course, this video here wasn't super rigorous. And of course, what I've said uh, needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. But I think this is quite a cool way to introduce complex numbers, Euler's formula, uh, in quite a nice way uh, to quite a cool problem. Um, so if you've not seen complex numbers before or you've not seen them in, in any particular detail, you may, might wonder why they're useful. I think this problem might be a fun one just to play about with. Um, but if you have seen complex numbers in a bit more detail, you probably know that I've cheated a little bit here. Um, but anyway, hopefully that you found this video interesting, a little bit different. Uh, if you are new to the channel, please do uh, give this video a like and subscribe if, you, uh, if you've enjoyed this and you want to see more stuff. It's completely free, a great way to support the channel. And if later on you decide you no longer want to watch my videos, that's completely fine. You can unsubscribe then as well. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.